something more Don't want the middle Or the one before I don't desire A complicated past I want to love that will last you love me see I'm the one don't kiss and hug me and then try and run I'm through with heartache and living too fast I want love that will last I don't want just a memory and that's Steve Tyrell from his latest I'll Take Romance Hey, Steve, sounding pretty smooth. Thanks, man. That's a, friend, that's a song that uh, David Foster and his wife, uh, Linda, wrote that I always loved. And uh, that's how I like that song. I haven't heard it in a while. Now I'm off making a new album, you know, so I, when you put these songs on and I'm listening to them, I go, hey, man, that sounds pretty good. Well, let's, like let's talk about I, your new stuff and where to get your CDs. Yeah, back in the day, we used to go to the record store, and that was kind of the place to do business. But nowadays, you I know. Come, how is it done nowadays for our audience out well, there? Now, I mean, it's pretty much, you know, iTunes and Amazon.com to get my stuff. I mean, there's not even a, a – you know, it used to be Barnes & Noble was good and Borders and those kind of places. And, of course, Tower Records. And, but now yeah. they're pretty much, pretty much all gone, you know. Do you have a website, Steve? Yes, yeah, stevetyrell.com. Okay, can people buy your um, albums yeah. off there? Yeah, so they send. I, yes, they can, and they, they send it to uh, to Amazon too. Oh, perfect. Of course, nothing uh, nothing better than seeing somebody perform live and in co- concert. I mean that. Uh, I mean, for my, for my money, that's yeah. Just but the way, you that's know, we don't sell any albums, or we don't keep albums. Give you a chance to continue to do new music. You know, right? I mean, it used to be that you could make money at it, but uh, but the albums give you a chance to like you know do some new arrangements and come up with something else and, like i'm doing an album right now that i'm very excited about it's it's an album of sammy khan songs oh great uh, oh, wow. and his, he's celebrating his 100th birthday oh, wow year. so his centennial will be in 2013 and uh, i've uh, his wife tita uh, his widow has always been a big fan of mine and she gave me a couple of songs that nobody had ever done that are great and I started playing them a few months ago, and people love them. And uh, you know, they have a Sammy Kahn. He won five Oscars, and oh. I mean, he's truly, truly one of the great writers of the 20th century. And they have some original stuff. Kind of led me to doing a, a whole album of his music, of his songs. And uh, that's going to be my next album. What a great I idea! Probably won't, probably won't come out until May. But they're going to in, in December when I play the Carlisle Concourse, going to like an EPK of five or six of the tunes so people can hear a little bit of what it's going to be because he wrote some great christmas songs too beautiful wrote, uh, let, let it snow you know did he yeah Do you oh, he wrote so many he wrote call me irresponsible you know come fly with me uh, 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 on and on and on i can't well remember. i know i know that frank used to talk very very highly of him and i think frank well told... he did so much i mean the, the tender trap yeah uh, um, so many uh, come fly with me. What else? Uh, a lot of Sinatra. Saturday night is the loneliest night. Oh, oh yeah, wow. yeah. Uh, he, uh, he's a national treasure. Oh yeah, him and him and Sinatra had a great thing going. Now I understand you learned a lot from Hal David and Bert Bacher. I sure did. When I left Texas, it, I was 18 years old. And I got a job working for Scepter Records, which is a was a rhythm and blues label as a producer and a promotion man. And uh, I just fell right in immediately to working with Bird and Al. They were just really getting rolling with Dionne Warwick, you know. And uh, I was kind of the kid on the team. And they listened to me like you always listen to the young guy, right? They thought I knew something. <laughs> <laughs> but I was more in touch with what young people were listening to than they were. And so we made it formed a good team, and we were very successful for about 10 years. We had, like, almost hit after hit was Dion Warwick, and, and then I brought my buddy B.J. Thomas uh, to, to sign him to the label and recommended him for Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid. Oh, wait, 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 your buddy B.J. Thomas? Jeez. Yeah, he, was, he and I grew up in Texas, Houston together, you know. 
He's a nice guy. I met him. He's a sweet man. Great. And yeah. a great singer, too. How did you come by producing um, the Grammy-winning album for um, Andy Griffith? Well, Andy Griffith, I was going to say Rod Stewart, but because uh, I did one for well, him, too. Well, that, too. <laughs> and, and, uh, but, but, uh, but Andy would really loved my performances in Father of the Bride. That's, and he loved those songs I did in it. And he got a hold of me. And when he was doing Matlock, yeah. and uh, he uh, he's loved music and he taught music. And Andy was a pretty well-rounded guy. I mean, if you ever, uh, you know, see Face in the Crowd, even if his aunt's movie, Andy's br- brilliant in it. Yeah, he was. And, uh, and he just gets to be, you know, and he taught music, and he was a trombone player, and he read music. And so he was a big music fan. And he would hire me on Matlock when he wanted to sing with somebody. You know, he would have, like, Randy Travis on or uh, or Brownie McGee or some blues guy and so that wanted to act, or Clint Black or somebody like that. And, and then I would go in the studio and produce Andy and Randy Travis singing together or something. And then I'd go to the set and help him shoot it. And because that's what I was doing in those days, working on movies and television shows, you know. And um, anyway, we were in his trailer one day, and he told me he'd love to make a gospel album. And I said, well, man, if you made, like, a really great one with really good arrangements, and you, you, uh, you know, you pick some of those hymns that are, like, legendary that everybody sings in churches, uh, I bet you it would sell like crazy, especially if they advertise it on TV. So he said, you, really, you think so? I said, yeah, so... About a year later, I was in Nashville. I didn't know anything about the gospel business, but a friend of mine did. He put me in touch with the EMI Sparrow Records, and I told them my idea was, and they said, great, let's do it. And I went in the studio, basically, with James Taylor and Linda Ronstadt's band. Wow. And made that out. Steve, no it, wonder it, it, it was a Grammy winner. Steve, can we impose big, on you was, to, to stay with us for one job. more break? Can we, can, we, can we do that, Steve? Stick with us. I want to talk to you about Morgan James. A lot of more fun to come. We're talking with Steve Tyrell on the PM Show with the Medettis. We'll be back right after these messages. Don't go away. And, of course, your phone calls, too. This is Larry Minetti. It's summertime now, folks. So if you want to go out and play golf or go swimming and you're